Hello there, hey, I'm Mike Casway, and I'm going to take you through in-betweens, and I'm going to call this little lecture here in between the poses. You know, when we're learning animation, you know, there's a whole bunch of principles to kind of run through our head and jam through our head, and when we're first learning it, it's a lot. That's a lot to keep in track of, you know, anticipation and follow-through and overlapping phrases and all that kind of stuff. There's all kinds of things to, to think about. It's like... How do I do it all at the same time? Well, you know what? What I'm going to try to teach you right now is to take animation and put it into bite-sized little portions. Okay? When we go from a pose to a pose, how do we get between there? You know, now normally we can just let the computer do it, but guess what? It's pretty boring. And you know what? That's what makes computer animation look like computer animation. So let's take the computer out of that. All right, and so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show you through some very simple exercises first on pen and paper first, and then I'm gonna show you some really simple things in Maya, and then go right to a little bit more complicated character. Now really, all we're looking at is how to do our in-betweens, what that's gonna be. There's other principles that I'm not gonna, I'm gonna kinda touch on just a little bit, but I'm really just gonna show what the in-betweens are. So let's get started, all right? So first, we have two poses. All right, so something very simple here. This is some really complicated animation. I hope you can keep up. Here's a ball, and it's gonna go from here to here. Yeah, that's really simple, right? Okay, now if we let the computer do the in-betweens for that, it's gonna go like that. Like I said, boy, I wanna put some arcs in that. I wanna put some imagination, some life into it. So the first thing I can do is an anticipation. That's gonna be my first in-between is my anticipation. Now. What I like to do with anticipations is I want to make it different than that first pose. Where was that pose and where is it going? You know, this is an electron anticipation, but I at least want to get that going and saying, I'm going to go that way. So my anticipation is going to go this way first and then that way. So just to keep it simple with our really complicated sphere, here we go from here to here, anticipation, because I added a little bit to it. I could have gone straight back here. But like I said, that's a little boring. So I'm gonna make it a little bit more interesting. Now, if I stay with the computer and I stay in linear mode, or more importantly, like I like to work in is stepped, I go here and then here. So now let's just look at linear here, you know, because now all of a sudden we're getting a little bit more interest. Okay, we're trying to get some a little arc going here, kind of, kind of. It's still not great because now we have to do a breakdown. You know, a breakdown would be really between now the anticipation and the pose, all right? So I've got my pose, I've got my anticipation, now I've got my final pose. Let's add a breakdown. Now, I could add a breakdown like where the computer would, and let's just say about 50%, okay? I'm gonna draw it in, in orange here just so you can see the difference. I'm gonna draw it really big just so you can see it. Okay, so now if a computer does that in between, it's gonna do it right here. So now it's here, 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 it's okay, but we want to add more arcs to it. We want to add more life to it. Um, so let's add it right here. So now if I connect the dots, now you can see it becomes more interesting. Pose, anticipation, breakdown, pose. Now I'm starting to get an arc going. I'm starting to get a little arc going here. It makes it a little bit more interesting. Now if I left it like that, it would be okay. It would be better than this, that's for sure but it's still not exactly where I want it to be as far as animation, okay? So let's start adding more in-betweens. Now, I'm gonna do a little bit of uh, adjustments with spacing here. That's not exactly what this lecture is. I just wanna show you in-betweens. Spacing is almost an entire other lecture, but I'm just gonna give you just a little bit so you can see what it could look like. Because I'm gonna adjust my spacing so that at first it kind of slow out, slows out of this, has a nice arc. And so here's what I'm doing. So now you can see at the beginning, it goes from here, here's an in-between, here's another in-between, here's my anticipation. I'm playing with my arcs. I'm playing with my spacing a little bit. So now you can see, now it's starting to get better. I'm controlling it, the computer's not. I'll show you how we can do this in a computer, but let's just keep it simple. So to keep with that idea is maybe I'm having it speed up a little bit and then I'll do my last in between. So now, if I kind of draw it, and I'm gonna have to make a slight adjustment here, 
which is good because we're gonna make some adjustments too. And I'm gonna point that out. Now let's look at that. Now we've got an arc. Look at that arc. First pose, in between, in between, anticipation, in between, in between, breakdown. Now see what I did with my breakdown? I made an adjustment after. That's totally cool. Make your adjustments after. That's all right because I'm working on my arc. One more in between pose. Now I promise you, you put that in the computer, that's gonna look a heck of a lot better than this, okay? So now this is on paper, and you see how easy that is on paper. Let's go into the computer and let's see what, what that can kind of look like there, all right? So here we are on the computer now. Okay, now this is Maya, as you can see, a very simple thing. What I wanted to do is go in the side view so you could really see what's going on. So I just posed my character. I just finished blocking. I'm here at frame one, I'm scrubbing all the way through to frame 24. So it's pop, pop, you know, it's in step. Be boring, like I said before, right? Okay, so now I'm in step mode, and so let's go to an anticipation. Let's go about five frames, and I'm gonna pull back just a little bit. I'm gonna go here, and now here's my anticipation. Eh, that looks kind of good. Okay, so now it's bam, anticipation, last pose. Okay, so there, I'm gonna click pose, anticipation, last pose. Okay, that's simple, pose, anticipation, last pose. Now, when I'm doing my breakdowns, I'm gonna do my first breakdown between my anticipation and my pose. Okay, that's what I really wanna talk about here, is there's a couple ways that I can do it. Now, one way is, I can open my graph editor here, and I can say all, and I'm just gonna select everything, and then go to linear. Okay, so I got it linear, and so like if I close this, and I'm just dragging through, there's linear. Okay, so now you can see, it's kind of dragging through all right, but you know, if I wanna have that same thing, like what I was doing with my piece of paper here, you know, if I wanna get that in between, a nice arc and everything, um, I have to make an adjustment. Now, one way I can do it is at, make it linear, but then when I go to about, about halfway, six to 24, that's about eight frames, so frame 14, I'm just gonna hit the S key, bam. Save a key right there. Okay, so now, if I'm going through and I'm just clicking through just my keyframes, anticipation, or I mean pose, anticipation, breakdown, last pose. Now, once again, this isn't that exciting, so let's make a little adjustment to it. You know, whatever, going through my pose. There, now I can get a little bit more of an arc there. Okay, now, what I'll have to do, because if I'm scrubbing through, I'm like, wait a minute, this is still in step mode. So I got to make it all in step mode. Okay, so I want it all in step mode now. So now here we go. Pose, anticipation, if I'm scrubbing, there we go, okay? Now, I can make more adjustments to this if I want, and that should be good. Let's make this anticipation not as big. So now, I'm going through and you can kind of see arcs. Now, that's an okay way of doing it. Let me show you a simpler way. You know, I, if you just have a sphere, that's awesome. You know, going into the graph editor and saying, all right, select everything, make it spline or linear, drop a keyframe, and then make it all stepped again. That's not too bad if you got a spline, or if you got just one, one uh, uh, aspect, like a sphere. What if you have a character? Oh, man, can you imagine doing that? Well, I've been around animation for a little bit. I had to do it like that all the time. That's how I used to do my breakdowns, and I would do it as just a placeholder. Well, now there's something that's really awesome that I wanna show you guys how to use this tool. Um, it's called Tween Machine. It's awesome. It is a great tool that you can find um, online, and it's free, and it's awesome. Because here's what it does. It does all that work for you. And so say, I, now I took out my in-between. I took out my breakdown, all right? So now I'm gonna to go to frame 14 once again, and with what's selected, I'm gonna to go to about 50%. All I do is click on it, and what it's basically doing is it is saying, what is this pose and what is this pose? Let me delete this so you can see it one more time. Delete. I am at this pose and I am at this pose. Okay, so let me delete that. I'm here, my anticipation, and I'm at my last pose right here, okay? What it's gonna do is it's gonna say, okay, wherever you drop, wherever you put your cursor, wherever your frame in time, which mine's at frame 14, I go up to tween machine, 
and it's going to say you can either pick either either key for it to tend to for it to be closer to and so like right now I'm going to drag it all the way to the one on the left ne negative 100 that's going to be the exact same key as my anticipation so if I go frame by frame look at this frame 6 my anticipation I go to my next frame which is 14 it's in the exact same spot but say I do this watch this I'm going to drag it halfway Ooh, look at that it's halfway I draw a hundred percent now it's exactly what that other key pose is so if you put it right at 50 percent which would be zero because it's either negative 100 or 100 so if I put it at zero come on click now it's exactly halfway between there so if I bring up my graph editor it did exactly and if I go to linear it did exactly halfway see how that is there's my keys right there exactly halfway look how fast it did it you know and it stayed in step mode it kept it all the same it did all that it's pretty cool that way so now I can go in and make my little adjustments the same way that I did before you know so I'm going through and saying do I like this arc no I don't I want it over here so now there we go that's looking pretty cool okay now I can start adding more in-betweens okay so I've got that all done now let's go between my first key and my anticipation okay so I want to add more in-betweens let's go right here and let's start to actually have it tend to something okay so I'm gonna have it tend to that first pose and so now you can see that it's I'm starting to worry about spacing I'm gonna play with the arc a little bit okay this is what I like to flip back and forth so much it's fun you know so now I'm doing that I'm doing all my in-betweens now let's do another in-between I think between my first my first key and my anticipation is probably okay but let's do something here let's now do another in between between my anticipation and my breakdown let's do another one I'm gonna do it right at about 50 and but I'm gonna tend it more towards the anticipation okay so here we go now I'm looking at my arcs because I'm flipping through everything flipping through and I'm looking at my arcs now I can even play it back. Obviously it goes slow. Let me add some frames at the end so you can see the end. You can see where my timing is. I'm, I'm starting to space it. Now the thing is, it'll always look weird because when you're in step mode, dude, you got from 14 to 24. That's 10 frames for it to go that far, okay? So I mean, so let's add another one, almost halfway, and let's tend it towards that about halfway but let's tend it towards the other one and so now let's look at these keys still make it more of an arc so there we go now look at all those in-betweens that I've made I go in the graph editor check it out and see all that we can make it a spline and let's see what that's uh, let's see what that looks like you know now I'm not a big graph editor fan. I don't really hang out in the graph editor that much. Now, I'm not worrying about spacing. Remember, I'm not worrying about spacing. So there's some things in here that, you know, once it gets from here to the end, eh, doesn't look too good. But here's the great thing, is that if I don't like it, I can just start moving frames. You know, if I'm, if I'm not a big fan of that, then I can just start adjusting my frames, okay? Because I can do it in my graph editor. I can move them. If, if I don't like where it is from here to here, I think it's a little bit slow, I can do that. Um, I can make some adjustments here and then see what that looks like, you know, play it like that. Um, make another play. Now all of a sudden it's not too bad. You know, so it's different that way. I can go into my dope sheet and make changes like that. But I'm really just worrying about my in-betweens. That's it. And look at this. I've done those in-betweens. The computer didn't. The computer would have never have gotten it to that point, okay? Hey, real easy. Hey, that's a sphere. What happens when you add another character, a really complicated character, with facial animation, stuff like that? Let's take a look at that. Okay, here we have a little bit more complicated character. And I'm just going to show just a little bit here. There's about 300, well, there's 156 frames here. 
and I was going to kind of scrub through it or just play through it. And this is just blocking, initial blocking, you know, here. You so. Okay, so now you just see that real basic blocking that's here. And let me just go through the frame super quick. Come back. And now you can see I've got my first keyframe here, my next pose, and I'm hitting my storytelling pose. That's all I'm doing right here. You know, so I'm just hitting all these strong poses here, knowing of what I'm gonna do. Now some of them, you know, like this is more like an anticipation here. Uh, that I'm doing and then a bigger pose and then a final pose here. Now what I'm going to focus on is going from this first part into this next pose, the very just the beginning part here. Um, so I'm going to go from basically from frame one to about frame 30 just to kind of give you an idea of what's going to happen using the exact same concepts uh, that I was using in the drawing and then with the real simple ball. Okay, so when I have this, I already have keyframes on everything. You know, so if I go here and just show my curves, I have a keyframe on everything for my character. This is the Morpheus rig that you can find for free online, which is amazing and is awesome. It's completely awesome. Um, now, there will probably be some issues in this lecture that I'll say, oh, I can't remember how to use this because I'm not super familiar with it. But I think that's kind of good to show this lecture too because you can see that this methodology of having the poses, getting an anticipation, Getting the breakdown can happen with anything. You don't have to know a character perfectly. You don't have to know the rig perfectly in order for it to work. So this kind of shows it nicely. Okay, so let's go in here and I'm gonna just show what I'm gonna do for my anticipation. So if I just have my main, uh, I guess it's the spine that is here. You can see it right here. Um, what I look at is between the two poses, okay? So I'm in one pose here and I'm going to go this way and so I'm looking right at this area of what's that going to be now for my timing I've done X sheets for this and I know exactly where I want my uh, anticipation to be so it's going to be right around frame 20 you know so what I'm first going to do is since I don't have a character set with this I'm going to select everything and then I'm going to say set I'm going to set a keyframe so I just hit the S key just to set a keyframe there now I'm just just to make sure that now when I go from frame one, I can go right to frame 20 as my anticipation. Okay, so I've got a keyframe there, so I can easily just flip between them. If I don't do that, I'll have a problem that I might forget to set a keyframe on something else, uh, and that can create a big problem, so I'm not gonna do that. Okay, so what I'll do here is I'm looking for my anticipation. I'm gonna say, okay, he's gonna go up and to the right. So what I wanna do, or up and to the left, so I'm gonna go down, and to the right just a little bit and then I'm also going to look at what what way does he rotate you know so obviously I'm going to rotate him back just a little bit and then I just keep flipping through that you know so it's down that way you know a little bit of this rotation I'm not worrying about my hands or anything like that I'm only working at one part at a time okay but I'm creating my poses okay so that looks pretty good and so I'm just going to keep going up uh, the body here and I'm just going to keep doing the exact same thing. See, there's a keyframe there. And so I know what I'm going to do. So I'm just going to keep going through that. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to start really exaggerating it. You know, so I'm going to go really exaggeration, you know, through there. So I'm just going to keep going through his body the entire way. Um, just getting different keys. You know, so up. And you can see I'm only looking at my... I'm only looking at my uh, um, my camera view, right? Now, so this isn't the best in the world, and so oops, what I'm going to do is start to move these little things around here. You know, so I'm always looking at that um, his silhouette, and I'm always looking at his line of action. And so I'm just constantly just going through there, so you can see what I'm doing. Okay, so I'm just going to go just I'm going to I'm going to make this really rough cuz this really isn't about an anticipation. It's really about how to get these in-betweens. And so let me just go through these really quick. So here we have uh, a little bit a little bit more into the poses now. You know, so there's the anticipation or here's the pose, here's the anticipation and then into the next pose. You know, so now we've gotten here. Now what I've done 
is I've just gone through and I've changed stuff. I've changed the shoulder, I've changed the face, I've changed everything. You know, so when you go into this and scrub it, so what you want to do now is we're going to try to do these in-betweens. Okay, so you have an anticipation and then you also are going to do a breakdown, right? Because remember what we did on the, in the sphere. You know, when we had the sphere, it was originally the pose, and then we had the anticipation, then we had the breakdown, and then we had the pose. So let's do the breakdown. You know, so the breakdown is going to be between the anticipation here and the last pose. Okay, so now I want to really have him push off like that, and so my breakdown is going to be a little bit different. But the first thing I want to do is make sure that everything is selected here. Okay, so let me get something here where I can see it all. And let's select it all. And now, just because I'm nuts like this, I'm going to drop that keyframe back on the anticipation just to make sure that everything's there. Okay, now I want to go, basically it's 20 to 29. And so let's, let's put it at about 25 just to kind of, you know, get it kind of close there. The thing I'm going to pick is tween machine. Okay, so let me make this now here. And so everything that's selected, all right, so I'm going to do this. And I believe I already have this toggle all. No, I'm just going to keep it selected. Okay, so what I want to do is just see what my in between is going to be. So here I'm using that tween machine, and I'm just going to click on this right here and just see what happens. Now, see, now this is going to make an in between between those two. Okay, so now I've got a ballpark of where I might want to go. Okay, so if I'm just scrubbing through. See, now look, it, it did these in-betweens for me. Now, what I want to do is make adjustments to that. I like using Tween Machine to at least get me in the ballpark. You know, so now I've got a keyframe on everything. And so now I keep going, what I did with my anticipation, you know, now I've got a keyframe here at frame 25. You know, so I'm here. Now, say, so look, I went back. I'm going to go forward a little bit here, get my... My breakdown's working. So it's going to go here. He's going to start to go up a little bit, and then he goes up even higher here. But I want to really rotate him forward this way because he's going to be pushing off of the chair. He's going to push this chair off. Uh, okay, so now, and let me actually hide this thing. I'm going to layer. Okay, so now um, I want to start playing with the body a little bit. So I'm going to rotate his body, still looking at all these in-betweens. And I'm going to hold back a little bit. I'm going to hold back just a little bit. So now I'm looking at arcs. Okay, and I'm just looking at the body, seeing what the body's doing. Okay, like I'm not looking at his arms, I'm not looking at his head. I'm just looking at just his body right there. And I think that looks kind of good because I know what I'm going to do. I know I'm going to actually... Um, move this body just a little bit. Have it come forward just a little bit. And then I'm going to rotate this also just a little bit. Okay, so if I go from here to here to here, now look at that. So now I'm looking at an arc right here on how to go through that. You know, so I'm here, I'm here, and now I'm here. Okay, so what I'm going to do is start making, start playing with the arms here. And so I got the, the body here, the there, the there. Now I'm going to start looking at the arms because I'm looking at every part. Now, since I've used that tween machine, it's kind of helped me get in that ballpark. And so my arms, I know where my arms are going to go. Okay, but now I just want to adjust that. So here we go. Here, he's going to push this out. So with my shoulder... I already have my keys there. I know where it's going to go, up and out. But I want to really push this. Push this forward. Okay? So, just pushing like this. And then he's going to really let it, let it happen. Whoa, 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 whoa. Push it out with that. And now let's pull it back up just a little bit. And I'll see what that looks like. So he's down pushes it up, and then goes up like that, because I want him to push that chair out. See, he's pushing that chair. Now, I believe he's going through it. 
because the chair doesn't have an in-between. You know, so now I'm like, oh man, what happened there? You know, how can I fix that? Okay, well, really easy. Let's go back and let's select the chair. Now, same thing. I'm gonna make sure that I'm at the right in-between. I'm at the correct in-between, 25, right there. And now, with tween machine again, I don't have to use it, but I'm going to. Let's see what that does. So now, all that's doing is putting it in the ballpark, right? Oops, right in the ballpark. Okay, so here we go. So, obviously it's still not in the right spot because of the hand I want to have pushed through it. It's probably rotating at the right spot. Now, let's, rot let's push it a little bit further on. So there we go. Okay, so now that's looking okay. Let's look at the hand. Let's really get the hand going. Okay, so I've got my wrist selected. Let's make sure that the hand is working. Just looking at my in-betweens. Now, what I'm thinking right here is that maybe it's not the best. That arc there, now the arc looks better. I wanted to make sure that that was kind of working. You know, so now that's working. Now, re remember, I'm only looking at I'm only looking at my body, and I'm only looking at really up up on his left side. So I'm only or the screen left side, and so I'm only looking here. I'm not looking at the right hand yet. Okay. So I think that that left hand is looking pretty good. I think that there's some in-betweens that I can still make that look better. Okay, but for what I'm trying to get right here, it's working. Now, I want to make some finger adjustments. I'm not going to do them right now because it'll take a little bit of time. But I want to make my finger adjustments on that too to really make that a little bit better. I want to shift over to the right hand side because now this is a little bit easier to see because what I want him to do is have this nice little gesture out. Right, His arm just goes out like that. And so now on my in-between here, I would like for this elbow to kind of get there before the rest of the arm. Okay, so what I can do is a pretty interesting thing, is that I can use tween machine to kind of help me do that. Okay, so I have the shoulder that will rotate, you know, like it will do, let me just go to a different frame so I can delete it. It will do these little things to it, okay? So I'm gonna, I want these little adjustments there. Okay, so let me delete that real quick. I'm gonna show you how tween machine can help you do this. So I've got this here. Now with selected, the only thing that I have selected, I want to get it closer to this pose, okay? So I have right now between this pose and this pose. When I'm here, now look at this. I pull it, it rotated it all the way so that if I go to this last pose, it'll have the exact same values. If you could see my values up here, they'd be exactly the same. Um, okay, so that's what I kind of want to do. I don't want it exactly there, I want it almost there. You know, like that. And so then I'm going to do a little adjustment like that. And so now, boom. Now, I'm only looking at my elbow. I'm only looking at that. I'm not looking at the hand yet. Okay? So now let's start looking at the hand. Okay? So let's go here. So that way I can get a nice arc going because I know it's not going to be there yet. So I get that arc. Now I start looking at my arc. Okay? Boom, boom, boom. Now I can see that arc going. Right through that, okay? Let me close this tween machine so you can see it. Now I wanna do drag, so I just start thinking about drag. When you're doing these in-betweens, you're trying to see there's gonna be one object that's gonna get there before the other, and that's drag. That's like, it's kinda of like, I like to think of it as, uh, you know, in the 80s when you're breakdancing, you're going all like that, doing the, the electric whatever slide. I don't know what it was, but it's you know, my age is showing. But anyway, you can see that the shoulder will get there before the elbow, before the wrist, before the hand, before the fingers. And so that whole thing. So when he's moving his arm out, you want the hand to be one of the last things there and the fingers to be the last thing there. And so when I'm going through these frames, it's here, it's here, and then it opens up. So on this one, I'm going to rotate the hand down. And so it has some nice drag. Nice drag to it. And it's going to be kind of following that line. You know, so it's I'm making sure that it follows that arc. And you can see that I might even have to rotate it up just a little bit. 
I'm not looking at, not looking at my fingers yet. I'm not looking at my fingers. Actually, I think it might be just a little bit too far. There we go. Okay, now I'm going to look at my fingers. So now you can see that the, the shoulder's already there. The elbow's almost there at that halfway because remember, I added that. Okay, so that's kind of there. Now my hand's going to be the last thing. I'm going to add another in between, as you'll see in a minute, um, to make that a little bit better. But right here, now I need to work with my fingers. Okay. And through the magic of time, look what I do. I've got now my fingers kind of animated there. I also did a little bit to my face here, you know, just to get there. So it's only this pose that I made some changes to. You know, so there's little things that the fingers kind of do, you know, right here that there's a little bit of a drag. And I also added some face. I did a little bit to his eyes. I made his eyes, they were wider. I made those a little bit narrower to get up here. You know, it's almost like a slight anticipation into this. You know, and then he's basically saying you, so I brought out his mouth here. So scrubbing it, okay. Now what I wanna do is I wanna add another in-between. Now, right here is between 25 and 29. You know, what I wanna do is kinda of pop open that hand and kinda of make him get there pretty quick. You know, so what I'm gonna do is about halfway, so between 25 and 20, 29, I'm gonna add another key here. And so remember, I'm gonna do the whole thing where I'll select everything again Select it all, drop a keyframe on there. You know, I want to make sure that even on this one that there's a keyframe back here, there's everything. Okay, so so now I'm all good to go. Now I've added another in-between frame. I haven't added anything yet because now I'm going between 20, 25 and 27. But what I want to do is play with that tween machine again. Okay, so with everything selected, I'm going to bring up Tween Machine. Let me just go to my camera view. You can see everything's selected. It's all weird and everything. Um, and now on this frame, I want it to kind of tend to the previous pose. I want it to kind of tend towards this, not this, because I want it to kind of pop. And so I'm going to tend it there. So I'm going to pull everything back just a little bit, and let's see. It's going to be a little bit closer. And let's see, between those frames now, here to here, to there. So when I scrub it, see how it's already, see how now you can start playing with spacing just a little bit? You know, because now if I'm looking at frame 25 to 27, not moving that much, 27 to 29, look how far he goes. So now you can see when I scrub it, you can see how that looks. Now let's do something crazy here. I'm going to bring up my graph editor and I'm just going to, just for the heck of it, I'm going to put everything on spline and see what kind of looks like there. Now it's going to be a little strange, it's going to be not perfect, but now when I play it, see see how it pops? Now it's going to be going to the next frame because I haven't, over here I haven't done anything, there's no hold. Um, but if you look, if you just kind of play just through that, just play through that. You can always see the, the speed, you can see all the speeds. Now, it's not perfect, it's not exactly what I want. And so I just wanted to show you kind of how that looks because there's no way I'm going to go to spline yet. You know, I'm going to stay everything in step still and show how that all looks. Now, let's go to this frame and let's start playing with some things, okay? Because there's a couple things. I want this hand to pop. I want this hand to kind of pop also, you know, because he pushed off. And I want this in between to kind of, he pushed and I want that hand to kind of go like that before it goes over. And so I need, I need to make some changes to that. Okay, so Tween Machine did its job, you know, and now I got to do some of my own stuff. So I'm going to go right through the rest of the body again. Now there's going to be some instances where it's okay, you know, when I'm going through. You know, like this is the main body, so I'm going to look at that so you can see it. It's not too bad. Now this might be an instant where I look at the graph editor and say, okay, what's going on here? Let's look at my translations. You know, so let me pull this up just a little bit so you can see it more. And I'm just looking at, I'm pointing, you can't see me, but I'm pointing down at, at his hips and seeing what happens. So he goes here to there to there. And so it kind of pops up. So maybe I want to have it kind of hold for a little bit there. But you know, you can see that real quick if I just turn this to spline just so you can see what it's going to look like. You know, right here, you can see that might do kind of a strange thing here. You know, it might do a little wobble, you know, right there. And so, 
let me make a slight adjustment. Whoa, 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 not that kind of adjustment. Let me make a slight adjustment here. Okay, so I'm going to go back here and say, eh, maybe he should be down a little bit more and see how that kind of pops. You know, and let me also pull this down a little bit. And now let's see if that's gonna wobble at all. Ah, that looks pretty good. You know, so now you can see what it's gonna look like, okay? And so that's one thing that I might do occasionally, you know, just to, especially especially with the hips, you know, I might look and say, hey, is that is that something that's gonna be a little strange? You know, that's no big deal here. There's not that big a deal here. You know, um, and just kind of see which way it goes. You know, even here, this might be a little odd. Um, but nah, it's not too bad. You know, so so not everything's gonna look like that. Occasionally, I'll go through, but now, now you can see how it really pops. You know, really pops just through that hips. You know, so it's just going right to there. So now let's keep working up the body. You know, so I'm gonna keep going up. I'm gonna say, where's my next little spot right here? Is that the right thing? Ooh, don't do that. Um, it's this thing. Actually, it's this thing. Almost this one. So same thing. It actually doesn't work too bad. You know, Tween Machine did a pretty good job there. Um, you know, this in between looks pretty good. No, actually, it's all, it's all not too bad. You know, so I think the only other thing might be this. It's not looking as good as far as translating. Um, so I'm gonna look on my Adobe sheet or my uh, graph editor and see kind of what's going on there. It's like, eh, maybe this could go up a little bit more, and I think that that should be good. Yeah, that worked pretty good there. Okay, but I definitely want to work on my arms because I want those to pop. Now, you've ever seen that where it looks like one hand kind of gets there before the other, you know, and you hear the term offset. Ah, it makes my ears hurt. You know, offset, which normally basically what that means is that you can take an object, you know, like let's say it's this part of the spine, um, and let's go into the graph editor. And what that normally means is that what people do is like, oh, this hits on frame 29. You know, I want it to hit a little bit later. So let's just select that and let's just move it over a frame. And so it looks like this. So if you look through, if I scrub through all of this so you can see this, it goes pop, pop. Okay, now it's like, whoa, why would you do that? You know, I, I just don't understand that. That's something that I don't do. I like to do it in the actual, um, uh, let's see, one frame. Hopefully this is one frame, right? Yeah. Um, I like to work it into the poses. And so one of the things is actually if the fingers or if the hands on different hands want to get there at different times. Okay, here's what I would do. And so now I'm here. Do I want to get this hand here just a little bit before? Maybe he's almost, he pushes it out. Or how about this arm? I think I would rather get this arm here just a little bit before, you know, so it feels like he's like, like that. Okay, so he's going to still be in this pose. It's still going to be that pose. But what I'm going to do is make this pose, that arm almost there, really close. Okay, so now one thing that I can do here is start to use my tween machine a little bit here. Okay, so this is just one way of doing this. So what I'll do is I'm going to select <coughs> multiply. I'm going to select the arm. So I'm going to select, oops, I want to select that one. I'm going to select the shoulder up here. I'm going to select, actually, the, I'm going to start with the clavicle, and then I'm going to select the shoulder also, multiple, and then select the elbow, select the hand, and then select the individual fingers, individual thumb, and the hand. <coughs> okay, now I have that, and in tween machine, I am going to create a set. For that, and I'm going to call that left arm. Alarm. Okay, so now I have that in there. So, what I want to do is turn off my selected, turn the toggle off, <coughs> and also then put it on L arm. And so, I'm going to go from this frame to this frame because what I want it to do is I want to get it closer to the end. And let's go in the camera view so you can see that a little bit. 
see this in camera view a lot better. Okay, so I'm going here, 25, 27. So what I want to do with that left arm is I want it to tend towards that end pose, okay? So now look, it's moving everything in that shoulder. Okay, now the thing is, you got to start looking at arcs too. Okay, so now it's in that position. That's great, you know, because I want, I'm going to add something else to this arm that's going to really make it pop, okay? But now I got to worry about arcs now too. It's like, okay, so it's in that position. So what I also want to do is have this nice arc because I have this arc, but then look, it pops up. So I will just, Tween Machine did its job. Okay, it's done. Now I need to start playing with my arcs. And so I think one of the arcs is really gonna happen at the elbow. So you look at this, nice there, not so much there because it's ending up here. So let's just move it up here a little bit. Look at that. Now I've got a nice arc. Now, and I also have my offset because my hand is already kind of there. I could, I could go in and then go to my wrist here and adjust that even more. And like now watch how this pops. Oops, I went by too fast. It goes like that. Now that could work, but the problem is, is that it's gonna pop around the same time. You know, so that looks nice, but I don't want it to pop at the same time. You know, so let me go through and I'm undoing it. There we go. Now, maybe I'll do just a little bit there because that pose isn't the best, you know, in the world. And maybe I'll add just a little bit to the fingers. You know, just, just a little bit, just to make it a little bit more interesting. And it's just really just with that finger, and I'm not a big fan of the thumb now that I'm in there. You know, so like that. And so now, so there we go. The arc is still working, and it doesn't look too bad now, because I want this to pop. Okay, so what I have him doing on this hand is I have him pushing through this. He's really pushed through that. Now what I want here is to have him go up like that. You know, so he pushes and goes like that. So it pushes like that. So the arm itself doesn't look too bad, but I'm gonna start something. I'm gonna try something. I'm gonna save. All right, now I want to see what this will look like by just adjusting the hand, okay? Because I've got this here. And I want to see kind of what that looks like. Now, it might just be as easy as this. You know, see what that looks like. You know, so just simple. Now, played together pretty fast. It doesn't feel too bad. That feels a little strange. You know, I think that I want to have that elbow kind of follow through and really get into this position to maybe even pop a little bit. And so let's try that. I'm trying it. You know, I want to see what this looks like. So I'm going to go up, adjust that elbow just a little bit, and come down, adjust this guy a little bit, go back up, like that. So now I've got a little bit with my elbow there, like that. So if I go here and I just kind of play it, I'm going to drag it a little bit further just so I can see more. You. You. And of course it plays it so fast you can't even see it. So that's kind of what I want to do is it's actually not too bad. I think it's a little bit too far. You know, I think this hand is just a little bit too far. Now let's look at it again. Now that's not too bad. Feels like there's some good drag on this. You know, now if I adjust my hands that'll work a little bit more because now you see this hand kind of gets in that pose and it takes this one a little bit of time. Now here's an awesome thing that I'm going to do too. As you can see, you know, there's some things with the head and stuff like that. Yeah, but I, you know, I want to show some, some more things that I can do with different in-betweens and how I can actually do that. Um, you know, so I'm not going to fall, I'm not going to worry too much about the head. Although I got to tell you, the arc is not too bad. You know, when you go even from here, it might have one more in between from here to this one, you know, to that breakdown. And actually, we'll, we'll, we'll do that. Okay, I want to see what that might look like. But I want to show you something else. I've gone from 25 to 27 to 29. Now, I really want this hand to pop. So I'm going to go to 28. 
Okay, and let's go select everything again. Make sure it's all selected. Drop that S, drop a, a keyframe on everything. See, I did it on everything. All right. Now, the thing is, with my tween machine, I'm going to say right smack dab in the middle. Okay, for that. Let's see what that looks like. Then when I scrub that, it's every frame now. You know, so my hand is already there, but I want this to pop. I want that hand to really pop. You know, if you look, so now it kind of pops in a bad way, if you look, because it's here, it goes down, and then it pops back up. I want it to pop here. So I'm going to make an adjustment just with that hand. Okay, select that hand, and I'm going to say, let's pop that down just a little bit. Now it's a big gesture makes that big gesture from there to there. So now if you look, I have completely been in control of my of my frames. All right, that's exactly what I want to do. Now, I can do little things like just make an adjustment to the hands and let's do that super super quick, you know, because I want to bend my my index finger just a little bit more or and then bend my middle finger a little bit more. So there's some drag on it. You know, so now, and let's actually do it with the other two also. Add a little bit more drag. And really just with the, the main part of the fingers. Like that. Let's pull these guys back out a little bit. Okay. So now, if I go from these frames, big drag, pop! Nice. You know, so now you go like that. Now you can see that this hand is already in that position. Now, let's go back to something. Now I've got my frames here, right? And now I might go through this. I'm going through my animation. I'm like, hey, this looks pretty good, but you know what? I need some drag on my head. And I'm like, man, something looks weird here. You know, I like this, but I want some drag on my head. And so let's go through this process where it's really easy now we, because you know we can go through and we can start adding some different things here. You know we've already added these poses, but how about if we start adding some drag? Maybe even make this pop just a little bit. Now I'm not caring about my eyes too much. And even right here, really have it pop because he's going to go, you. And now, now look at that. If you just look at just from 25 on, you know, so you go from here like that. Now you can start to see I'm really getting in control here. You know, little things to do that, you know, make that eye just a little bit better. You know, just rotate him just a little bit. Now, what you also might want to do is when he's doing this U is have, because he's still in that Y, you know, like that, you can make some adjustments to the face to really start to drag that. Um, you can, since his eyes, eyebrows are getting really big right here, why don't we start to move his eyebrows up, okay? And that's something that you'd really want to do is make some adjustments to the face. Now, you see, I'm adjusting everything, fingers, face, everything. You know, I want to make sure that I'm making all these changes now. Okay, now this is something that I'll go into my graph editor and make sure. Where's my Y translation? Let's kind of look at that. Bring this up here. And let's go back because I want to go into my camera view. See what's going on there. You know, so what I want to do is get him up there a little bit faster. You know, almost to where it is. You know, so look, I'm just making some slight adjustments in that in the graph editor because I want him down. But then now look, he's really gotten up there because now his eyes are wide and now he's there. You know, and so also it's that middle thing that's really making the eyebrows go up. And so let's make that change too. Right here. And where are you? Middle. That guy and that guy. 
Okay, so I want to make sure that he goes up too because he goes up, I think, pretty high on that. And so let's make sure that those Ys are the same. Just making a slight adjustment. Y, 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 Y. Right there. Okay, so now when he's going up there, it gets up there pretty quick. So see how the I, 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 the uh, eyebrows are starting to get there a lot sooner. You know, you could even maybe do do this. Or if you look at that and you're like, well, the graph editor said that, but it doesn't look like it's really pulling. Okay, let's go in and do it ourselves. You know, so sometimes that'll happen. You know, if you go to the graph editor, you're like, wow, I'm not, I don't know, because on the graph editor it looked fine. Okay, that's why you can't always trust the graph editor. You know, you go in here and say. I really want those eyebrows to get up there high, you know, so I'll do it here, you know, I'll move it up. So now it's here, it's up, let's get it up there still, because I want it there before. Now it looks fine. You know, you go through like that, go through those frames, look at that. So now it feels like that's really pulling him up, you know, look at that. It's not stretching. So now look at that. So that kind of helps pull the head up. Now you can see, if I look on the graph editor of that right now, not that, the graph editor. If I look on the graph editor of if I had something selected, which I thought I had it selected, let's select it again. Go in here, look at my graph editor on the translation in Y, look what happens. I went way past it. Let's spline that, just, just so you can see what it looks like. Look at that. That goes way past it. So on these earlier frames, it's here and it goes up. So if I trusted just the graph editor just to get to that point, it wouldn't work. I've overshot it, which if you think about it, if the character was just like this, it would be weird. But because we're basing it on the camera view and we're really trying to get um, what looks best in the camera, not what looks best in the, um, in the graph editor, it works. So let me actually step that still, go back to step. Okay, so now we've learned a bunch of things, a lot of little things too about offset, uh, you know, um, also about the graph editor and what we can do of animating even on every frame. Okay, so the next thing I want to do is let's do one more uh, in between. Okay, from here to here. All right, so I want to make sure that this in between is going to work. Okay, so lastly, what we're going to do here is something slightly different within these in-betweens. It's not gonna be a straight in-between because I can go from here to here, you know, from 20 to 25 and go a straight in-between, but I'm gonna do something different. I know that I'm gonna end up here, but I have a slight movement here. It's almost kind of like a sub pose, you know, and it's not, it's not really a big key or anything like that, but it's not a straight in-between either, you know, because I have this anticipation but I want to actually have him push through here. So I'm gonna show that, show his push, and then go in through this, okay? So there's gonna be some things that he's gonna be doing here that's gonna be a little bit different than just a straight in between. Let me show you the difference. Because like right now we have, if I go and act like this is a straight in between. Okay, let's, let's select this and let's frame it so I can see everything. And now let's select everything, okay? Like we always have been doing, like I've always done, select it all, go to, let's see, what is a halfway basically, 25, let's go to about 23-ish, like that, and let's just set a keyframe, you know, use our tween key, and just say 50%, just for the heck of it, okay? So now, I have him kind of push like that, but what I really wanna do is have him almost finish this move. Okay, and I want to do it. Can I do it with my arms? Well, it's the other arm, but maybe. But I just want to show the kind of a difference here is that when I'm here, and let's actually then um, see if this will work, if I can do this with the chair, um, and say that with that selected, let's put that 50%. Let's see what happens there. My in between, I'd probably have to go a little bit further. You know, close enough. You know, so.
as you can see, the chair is not exactly right because I don't think I don't think I did another keyframe. No, I didn't right here. You know, so let's make this keyframe about there. You know, so he's pushing this. But what I want to do is have him really push this. Okay, so let's play with some of that. He's like, okay, tween key, you did your job again. You know, you did kind of what I wanted to do here, but now I'm going to start playing with it quite radically. Okay, I want some some pushing going on here. You know, so let me frame that a little bit better and let's see what we can do. So now uh, this is this is a part where it's a little experimental because you got to really watch what you're doing here. You got to watch your frames, and so right now it's a straight in between. But what you want to do is I want to have him push this thing. Okay, so I want him to really push that. So now that one's okay, but the problem starts to become when it's a little bit. I'm gonna make sure I'm selecting the right thing here. Okay, the problem is is when we start going higher up. And you'll see. See now, look. See how he pushes. And I'm just looking at the body. It's almost a different move. Now, this might screw up my arc on this hand. That's okay. Chances are it will. That's okay. I'm not looking at that. I'm looking at the body. I'm not looking at the head either because the head might be a little bit different too. Yeah, so that looks pretty good, you know, on this crazy frame that we're doing here. 23. All right, so that's there. Now, maybe even I might have to do a little bit more on, let's see, what's the next one up? This one right here. Let's see if I can slightly do that. I got to be careful. But like I said, I'm not looking at my arcs because I can fix that easy. There we go. That's looking kind of cool. Okay, so let's go back and let's fix this arm now because I want this arm to almost be completely pushed out. Okay, so here we go. Lower arm, maybe even further down. Push this up, flip between those. Pushes through it. See how I have him pushing through that. Now, I can see, ooh, when I get here, I don't like that because I kind of like where this is going. I kind of like that. And now I don't like that one. Okay, it's all right. It's okay. Make some adjustments. And then this one's a little bit too high. It's okay. My hand starts looking a little bit funky. That's all right. Make some adjustments. There we go. It's kind of looking kind of cool. Don't worry about pass through yet. I mean, you can you can still fix that. Now, if you look, I'm looking at the body and I'm looking at his screen left arm. That's it. I'm not looking at his right arm yet. I think that right here he's still pushing out just a little bit too much. See. Oh, and I put it on the wrong frame. Hey. Crazy fool. Now remember these are these are frames that I've already uh, done in betweens on. You know, this is actually, I think, almost the breakdown, isn't it? There we go. It's looking a lot better now. There, now that's looking pretty good. Okay, so now let's turn our attention to this arm. Okay, let's look at these frames. It's okay, but it feels a little feels a little jerky. A little jerky, especially on this crazy frame that I did here. You know, so I think what I can do, and it looks like it might only be one little adjustment here. Yeah, it doesn't look too bad.
That doesn't look too bad. You know what's really funny is that he's got this big head here that I can see a movement there that looks a little weird. And I'm like, what's going on? And I'm trying to look at the arm, and I keep seeing the head. You know, so that kind of, that really works. You know, so now let's look at the head. I think the head might have something funky going on there. That's okay. You know, um, but it's because of what I've done here. He's got this long move that he goes from here to here, and then he stays there as he goes up. You know, so what do I want to do? I think here, let's see. This is sometimes when I'll just experiment with it a little bit, you know, and say, what does that look like going like that? Actually, that didn't look too bad at all. But I think that maybe when I got here, maybe I went too far. Maybe it's still too far. I'm not looking about the eyes. I can always fix those eyes. You know, and I'm looking at the nose is really the thing is, you know, I go by that point and I look and see, okay, where's that nose going? That actually looks pretty good. So, now, chair aside, it's not too bad. And you can see those in-betweens. Now, what I've just done is basically just gone from frame 20 all the way to 29. And 20 was kind of the anticipation that I did. And then 29 was the last post. So, obviously, I would have some more keys you know, at the beginning here. And then also from the end here. Now what I want to do is just for render reasons, just so you can see it when I go to spline, I'm going to do a copy pair at the end here, uh, just so you can see it. And so I'm just putting a key there, just so when I go through and, and render it all, um, you can see what it looks like. So, so right now, let's go to spline. I'm not worrying about pass through right now, not, not just yet. That's not what this whole lecture is about anyway. So I've got everything here. Let's just see what this craziness looks like in spline. Now remember, I'm really only looking at from 20 to 29. So obviously this first part is not going to be that great. But now scrub. And really, and not too much on this side too, because I already did a copy pair, so you're gonna have those weird overlap. But now you can see, at least to go into polish, now are there some things to do here? Obviously, you know, I'm not a big fan of the fingers, but that's some polish. Now, like I said, don't look at this first part. Because what I can do is, you know, to make it really quick, just to say, okay, well, that first part, yeah, that does look awful. But hey, here's something that I can do super quick right now is do what? I can add an in-between using Tween Machine and make sure that it's kind of closer to uh, the, the frame before or the keyframe before. So if I just do like that and scrub through it, So now, all of a sudden, I've just changed my speed. I've changed a little bit of spacing here. It's not perfect, believe me, because I've just dropped it in there. But you can see, that's how you can make an adjustment like that. And so we've done it really quick. You know, in real time, it's taken me probably about, just about two hours, kind of, to go through this. You know, if I don't have to talk about it, it'd probably take about an hour and I can just do it myself and all that kind of stuff. Um, but to kind of show you what's going on, it doesn't have to take that long. You know, so you can see that, are there issues? Absolutely. Now, but, does it look like when you are when you do just a few keyframes and it goes into animation? I don't think so. You know, right now, my simple polish, it's, it's like I've got a lot of polish to do to make it look really good. There's certain things with the eyes, the fingers aren't, aren't perfect, they're not exactly tight and all that kind of stuff, but I've gotten some fun in-betweens here. 
you know, <laughs> and especially what I like is this arm. You know, I like that, you know, because it goes up and it really does this and really kind of pops out like that. You know, you could even go a little bit further and I'm gonna show you just how one way that you can make this a little bit more extreme too. Now you can do this in the in the uh, in step mode in blocking plus, um, but I'm just gonna show you this real super quick. One way to kind of do this is if you go on the frame before I open right to here, and I'm just gonna curl the fingers just a little bit, just to show this. You can really see this pop. Now it pops, you know, and let me actually curl the thumb too. It pops. Bam! Bam! You know, that's pretty cool. So you see that scrubbing through. Wow! You know, like that. And maybe even do just a little bit here, curl it just a little bit right there. Um, you know, these are my adjustments. He's pushed that out, you know, because of the hand still passing through there. So now look at that. You know, I'm in control of that. You know, so that's something that I want you to, to kind of look at. So, like I said, there's still some things to do in the polish, but it's not as much as you do if you didn't go through this process of adding a lot of in-betweens. All right, so what I've done is basically have done one key. I did this little key here too, but that's nothing. To an anticipation, to then a breakdown, which was about right here, which I've made adjustments to. I've also then done an in-between from my anticipation to an in-between to my breakdown to another in-between and another in-between final pose. Okay, so within that, from my anticipation to my final pose, I've added one, two, three, four keys. Okay, all the way through. And so now what I've added between, if you just add from my one key, which started at frame one to 29, um, and a lot of it's a hold. So really, I mean, I wouldn't move anything really from about frame 14. Say from 14 to 29, I've added uh, one, two, three, four, five, six keys. You know, so in 15 frames, six keys. And now I can still play with that a little bit. Is it finished? No, but it's a lot better. Okay, well, I hope you've enjoyed this. I mean, it was a lot of fun to do and hope you've learned something from it. You know, it's not learning all the spacing. It's really learning how do you go from pose to pose. You know, and now here's one way to do it. There's some other things to get to learn after that, like overlapping phrasing and drag and all that kind of stuff. We've put a little bit in there, but this is just kind of how to go through the workflow. All right, everybody, it's my guess. Well, I hope you enjoyed it. All right, I'll talk to you later. See you later.